All right, welcome back to the program. In case you're just joining us, it's the, the segment where we look at the economics of COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, joining me right now is my guest. He's joining me from Lagos. He's Atedo Peterside. He's the founder of Stambik IBTC Bank PLC and the chairman of the Anam Foundation COVID-19 Think Tank. Welcome to you, sir. Good morning from Abuja. Hi, it's Lagos. Can you hear me, sir? Yes, I can hear you now. Good, good morning. Now, now I can hear you. Yes. Okay, l l let's move quickly to uh, the conversation. Um, since we um, confirmed the first case on the 27th of uh, February of uh, this year, how would you assess the fight against COVID so far? Are we winning the fight? The president has extended by another 14 days uh, the lockdown. Are we winning the fight so far in your own assessment? I think it is too early to say we are winning the fight. But one thing I can definitely confirm that is that we are doing some things right and we have to improve some other things that we are doing. And we have to ensure that we stay the course because we were caught a little bit unawares by the fight. So we have to do a number of things to catch up with other countries who are slightly in front of us on the race. What are the things, from what you said, what are the things that you think we've been doing right? Okay, I think before I address that question, I will just explain that for almost every country, there are three different pillars involved in the COVID-19 fight. There is the medical, which is pillar one. There is the governance pillar, which is pillar two. And there is the pillar three is about communications. So if you fo focus on just the medical without communications, you will go nowhere. That explains why you've seen President Buhari on TV two nights ago, and you saw him on TV, you know, also, I mean, on, um, on March 29th. It's about communication, because if you, can't, if you can't communicate with the populace, please, I'm not saying that it's for the president alone. It's for the entire elite, including governors, LGA chairman, private sector, constant communication is required. And then the governance pillar is very important also. Because if you don't, if you begin the race late and you don't have due process and you don't have division of labor and you duplicate efforts or, or, or you're wasteful, you will not win the fight. So those are the three pillars that are very key to the fight, to, to winning the battle. I repeat, medical, governance and communications. We are doing better and better every day on communications. On governance, the jury is still out. The jury is still out because Nigeria has been plagued for a long time by rogue regulators. I give an example of how these rogue, rogue, rogue regulators can be a nuisance. Everybody knows that Lagos cannot feed itself. We have close to 17 million people in a confined space. Food must come in from outside. Farmers report to my think tank or distributors that when they're bringing in food, there are policemen on the, at, at the road, at, on the road, trying to extort money from them, thereby making it more expensive to bring food into Lagos. At no time did anybody in government say that nobody must bring food into Lagos. Without food, we will starve. So the governance issues are as important. So if you want, for the rest of the interview, we can focus on health, on the medical side, or you can talk a bit on the, on the governance side, or you can talk a bit on the communication side. It's up to you to allocate the time, but I would advise that we start from the medical. Okay, okay, so, so let's start from there, uh, because from uh, what you're saying that we're doing uh, quite a bit, at least in the communication side, but also uh, going through your press release that was, uh, uh, the statement that was released yesterday, I can see that you said, uh, that's your foundation that will propose that these should be increased using a range of media channels, including radio jingles, TV, advertisements, posters, social, medias, uh, social media, as well as newspapers. Uh, that's for the communication side, which you've talked about. But let's take a look at uh, the medical side, which you've just mentioned. Okay, on the medical side, uh, I don't mean to offend anybody, because please believe me, people there have been working 24-7. In fact, I'm concerned for some, some of them because this is a massive, massive problem they are facing. 
I think on the medical side, we all know that historically Nigeria didn't invest sufficiently in healthcare. So we were not properly equipped for normal times. Now we have to, to, to equip ourselves for a major medical emergency. So we're a different ball game from Germany, who in the best of times were equipped and ready for an emergency. And that explains why Germany's and the results so far in terms of treatment is one of the best. We are starting late and we're starting from a lowly position in terms of the attention and care we have given to the entire healthcare sector. But having said that, even when you begin race, begin late in a race, there are some things you must do. Number one, you must define what are the priorities you must spend up, spend money on to catch up. That's why our first press release mentioned seven priorities. And please, there's no eight and there's no nine. If you're starting late, you must get test kits, number one. Two, molecular laboratories, number two. Three, surgical face masks and other cloth face coverings. Four, personal protective equipment for doctors. And also get as many doctors as possible and even reserve retired medical personnel, final year doctors into the race. Five, respirators, ventilators are usually helpful for treating the elderly. Six, some drugs we mentioned, which seem to be, seem to have had some encouraging results need to be purchased in large quantity. And number seven, very important, a safety net. Safety net, by that I mean, you cannot go into all this lockdown, social distancing, and you don't have any plan for the unemployed and underemployed. In Nigeria, there are roughly 40 million unemployed and underemployed people. So if you want them to stay in one place or, to be, or, or, or indeed to be locked up, you have to have a plan for them. Please, that figure of 40 million is in terms of employment. Actually, the number of poor people in Nigeria is estimated by NDS, which they estimate to be 80 million Nigerians out of, one, out of 180 million total population, roughly. So I'm saying that you have to have a plan for those 80 million people who are, who are poor, classified and confirmed as being poor. Now, please, let me, let's be very careful. I'm not one to waste my time blaming government. If you do the numbers, if there are 180 million Nigerians and 80 are poor, okay, so those are the bottom 80, add the next 20, and assume that those next 20 can just about feed themselves because they are not poor. It then means that the, the richest 80 million can feed themselves and can probably also contribute or help to feed the bottom 80. So even if every one person in the top 80 feeds at least one other person in the bottom 80, we have solved the problem. That is without government intervention. A member of the Anna Foundation COVID-19 think tank, Mr. Leo Stan Eke, the owner of Xenox Computers, owner of Ekonga, is going out to feed 7,000 people a day. I'm trying to show you that rich people can help the government to solve this problem. So we want more examples like Houston AK. Conversely, what we don't want is rich people constantly being distracted. Instead of coming to come and join Houston AK to feed the poor, suddenly somebody dangles that there's some money available at central bank billions. So the same rich people leave, what, leave the task of feeding the poor, get distracted, and begin to chase applying for things that are for the future. Can we just focus first? and solve the problem of the poor. Because please believe me, if you don't solve that problem, the poor will infect the rich and we will all die. Mm. Okay, so le let me just take you on the seventh uh, pillar, which you said here, still on the medical. And I'm quite interested in that safety net <coughs> handouts to 40 million unemployed and un underemployed. Are you by any means saying that what the government has been doing in terms of doling out palliatives, the, uh, the president also announced just a few days ago that more households will be joined uh, to collect the palliatives, the conditional cash transfer and all of that, isn't, is, is that not a good strategy to be able to give social handouts to 40 million uh, underemployed and unemployed Nigerians? Nancy, let's use real figures. I think the president mentioned increasing what the federal government is doing to cover 2.5 million households or something like that. 2.6, to make it 3.6 <laughs> million. Thank you. I love that. The correction. Now, let me explain. The total number of poor people in Nigeria 
using NBS official estimates is 80 million people. It's zero million. 2.6 million households does not cover all of the 80 million people. So if federal government is trying to look after 2.6 million households out of them, I'm saying that the richer Nigerians, state governments, LGAs, NGOs, should must now join to look after all of the 80 million poor people. Please, the 80 million people are poor, confirmed to be poor. So even telling them that you're only going to look after 2.6 million households out of them would, would drive them almost crazy. Because a poor man is a poor man. A poor woman is a poor woman. I'm saying let's make plans for all of them. I didn't say federal government. Leo Stan AK does not work for federal government. Mm -hmm. Nobody, President Buhari did not stop the rich people from trying to feed the poor. Let the rich people get up. Every state in this federation has very rich people. Mm. Okay, um, before I come to the issue of lockdown, this press release which your foundation uh, put out yesterday is still quite interesting. And let me, let me talk about, in your second paragraph, you said that each state, LG and community, has to localize its own lockdown uh, and or social distancing strategy. Um, on this show, at least in the last few days, I've been looking at the effects of the lockdowns and the economics of uh, the COVID-19 pandemic as it concerns the lockdowns. We're seeing, even yesterday on AIT here, even on our social media page, we saw what happened when a lot of Nigerians besieged a truck carrying food supplies, taking bags of rice and all of that on the road, risking their lives. Why are you of the view here that we need to localize our lockdowns? What does that mean? Look, like, let me use the, you know, they say charity begins at home. I'm from River State. In, in the south south and from and from an, an island called Obubu, Obubu town where King Jaja came from it's an island it's an island nation that is heavily heavy, heavily built up like Lagos Island there's no farm in the Obubu town just as there's no proper farm in Lagos Island so an island like that if you lock down all the mainland areas that supply them food everybody on the island will either starve to death or they will disobey you and cross the, the water to the mainland to go and look for food. I'm going to show you that it's only the community that can work with the traditional neighbors of the mainland who supply them food to work out details like that on account of COVID-19, market days on the mainland will be Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, or something like that, so that people know that on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, they can move, bring food, get enough for three days, Bring it back, bring it back to the island, and they can be assured that they can go back in three, three days' time. If a policeman now steps in and arrests all those who leave the island to go and look for food, we're in big trouble. And that kind of localized decisions is it is market day, Monday, Wednesday, or Friday, or is it Saturday? That kind of thing can only be done locally by community leaders in conjunction with their LTA chairman. And sometimes perhaps as the, the, the state government may give his blessing. I'm going to point out that if, if there is no one size fits all in lockdown. What works for Bobo Town is very different from Niger State. I mentioned Niger State. Why? It is the state in Nigeria with the largest geographical area. So even in the best of times, given their population, by the time those in Niger spread themselves themselves out and go to farm, there is already social distancing because each person is far away from his neighbor. In Lagos Island. Social distancing was never there because it was a crowded island. And then we wasn't it by having functions where the people came together into one hall or into one field. So I think I've got to explain to you that Niger State and its LGA must work out what social distancing means in Niger and work out what lockdown means in Niger. That same strategy cannot work for Lagos Island, nor can it work for Kano City, nor can it work for an island in the river state. But my point is that it has to be localized. The principles are the same. It is that make all the adjustments you can make such that your people are safer and they can get their basic needs. If you interpret lockdown to mean that you stop them from getting their basic needs, then you are in trouble because you are replacing um, one, a virus called, called coronavirus with a hunger virus. It doesn't make any sense. You know, uh, I, I'm just thinking what 
from your own analysis now, I'm just thinking, okay, fine, if we are to localize the lockdowns um, in our different geographical uh, cities, would we be able to contain the spread of the contagion as well as be able to, for the people to have access to basic things that they need to, to, to have? Because here in Abuja, for example, we have lockdowns, but people can access food, go to food centers to buy their food Mondays, Wednesdays, Saturdays. That's here in Abuja. So I'm just thinking, even with that, can we still contain the spread of the contagion at that point? Is there any other thing we can do medically to check that, like more testings and all of that? Because lockdowns is not only the answer or the solution. Please, let's be very careful. Everybody knows that the more tests we can do, the better off we are. Unfortunately, it's not something that you can ramp up immediately. That's why we, we gave out a list of seven needs. Even if you, you can get test kits quickly, you cannot build the required laboratories overnight with skilled personnel. So our, our ability to test is limited. That is partly why we have to remove, eliminate a unnecessary gatherings of persons which spread the disease faster. So all, I, all we said in the press release was that interpret and operate your own social distancing or lockdown to an extent possible, given your own peculiarities where you are. That is just like a template. Don't make it so severe that everybody starts to death. That is senseless. At the same time, don't make it so lax that they gather together needlessly and infect each other. So I'm saying, that's why I keep on saying that localized means bringing in the elites or leaders in communities who work out arrangements. Please, some of these arrangements don't cost any money. If you tell the group to limit their ceremony to five persons, like, like some, some, some have done in England, it, it even saves you money because in the past you would have invited 400 guests. So it saves you money. Some of these things don't cost any money. That's why we refer to them as the low hanging fruit. You are taking the pressure off even rich people to invite the, the whole of your city for a wedding, saying no, keep it small so you don't infect people. But please let me just make sure that I mention what I will call. Eight must win battles. Because you keep on asking me, are we going to win? For us to win, there are some eight battles we must win. The first one, we must spend wisely. How can we begin late and then spend on wisely? The second one, we must have quickly put in place an elite consensus. Because it's the elite, when I say elite, I don't mean money. It is the community leaders, it is the spokespersons who can convince the populace to accept lockdown social distancing to an extent possible. Three, you must find some credible voices that everybody believes. Because if people don't if, if people don't believe you in normal times because you lie every day, in a crisis they won't believe you when you show up. So let's remove people who have been known to be telling lies every day because they confuse the system. Then number four, I've already mentioned safety net. You have we have got to make arrangements in every community, every state, every locality for federal health to ensure that the poor, even when they are locked down, can eat well. Number five, there's no time for blaming anybody. It's not the time, I have no interest in blaming anybody. We are where we are, so let's go to the best. A football team, you are two goals down, you still have 40 minutes to play. Can you just start playing and try and equalize or try and win the game? Instead of wasting time looking for who to blame as to why you, why, why you lost goals in the first half. Number six, division of labor. If we don't quickly assign different tasks to different people and, and, and if we duplicate efforts, we cannot win this fight. They are not foundation to be 19 things and is focusing on the on the aspects that involve thinking through the whole problem and helping everybody else who are, who are actors. Number seven, please, this is just a, a truism. In any community, anywhere in Nigeria, if the lockdown is too severe, meaning that people are starving, then it will fail. It cannot be sustained. For mm. it to be sustained, it must be loose enough for the people to get their basic requirements. Then number nine is just a warning that in the midst of all this, you would, sorry, number eight, mm. you, in the midst of all this, you would think that we would all be focused, pointing out what the problems are, pointing out what needs to be done next. Some people are still playing games, race singers, 
somebody makes a, makes a mistake, you praise him. Why do you praise somebody who made a mistake? Please, in my think tank, when people make it do the right thing, we praise them. When they do the wrong thing, we rush to them quietly and say, hey, 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 wait a minute, you made a mistake. Some of them quickly get a chance to adjust. Some of them say, thank you very much. I have so many messages from people thanking us for drawing their attention to errors they might have made. So these are some must-win battles that are as important as the whole medical effort. Mm. Okay, so um, eight, eight things we must do to win the fight. Just to summarize it again, spend wisely, elite consensus, credible voices must speak at this time, safety nets, like you said earlier, no blame game at this time, division of labor, of course, where there's a lockdown, starvation, people, there's no quarantine. You can't quarantine hunger, as it were. Then people must be uh, focused. <laughs> okay, let's move over to the business community because uh, you, just yesterday also, the Central Bank Governor came up with his own vision, which I did take some key takeaways earlier. But do you think at this time that it should also go in hand in hand as we fight COVID-19 pandemic, a comprehensive policy for the macroeconomic environment as well as businesses within COVID-19 and post-COVID-19. You remember you know, the business uh, co community in Nigeria? Yes, please let me explain. Uh, we are in a national emergency. Mm. We are behind in the race on COVID-19. I would like all, all the people, rich, poor, government, NGO, to put their mind and their brains on this emergency. Mm. You have to be alive to plan for the future. Now, the point I'm making is that constantly dangling a carrot for the future with huge sums of money distracts some rich people who start chasing that money instead. I'm saying, can we please, please, please spend the next two weeks? The president was on TV talking about things like safety nets, helping the poor. Can all the rich people please forget about chasing trillions from central bank? Mm. Join this race now like Leo Stan AK mm. and solve the problem of the very poor. There are 80 million. That sounds like a lot, but I've explained earlier. The top 80 million can afford to feed the bottom 80 million. So can we please focus on the poor first? There will be enough time in future, I guarantee you, to talk about all this life after COVID-19. I'm focused on solving the problem today because we're in a crisis. We are behind many other African nations. We are behind Ghana. We are behind Rwanda. We are behind Kenya. We are behind South Africa. We are behind them investing numbers and all. So we have a crisis. And I don't like all these constant distractions of people dangling large sums of money. Because the same rich people get distracted. Their priority is to go and arrange to feed the poor people that are from their communities or the do business in their area and get them fed properly. Mm. I will discuss with you in, 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 in four weeks' time or six weeks' time after the emergency is over. You know, but, but of course, I can use my spare time when I'm idle to think about life after COVID-19. And let me also warn about something, please. If people who understand COVID-19 know that in many parts of the world, there's a lockdown. Some of us are involved in old transactions that have come to a halt because of COVID-19. You can't even get materials out of South Africa because they are locked down. But materials to come from some parts of the U.S. are locked down. So what? who is going to build the factory when all the parts you need are locked down in various places? And if you don't make the mistake of giving them money, you will be involved in a court case sooner or later on force major. People telling you that they, they, they cannot perform, but they have no plans to, to give you your money back. Some of us already have transactions like that. That is old transactions where the lockdown has made, made people un unable to deliver some of them are refusing to return the money, all kinds of things. So let's be very careful because the most dangerous time to start thinking that you can get supplies of machinery, spares and parts and so on, is during a global lockdown. There's something called global supply chain disruption. That is a serious thing and affects our ability to quickly build molecular laboratories. That is our priority now, molecular laboratories. It will enable us to scale up our testing for skilled staff, if we can test people, then there's no more need to lock them down. And if you can feed them, you can hold them in one place longer until you can test them. Let all the rich people, including Central Bank, put their energy on that right now. Mm. Okay, since you've brought up that, because I also know that uh, a, a few billionaires, a few private sector people 
have donated monies. Uh, they, uh, it is called Private Sector Coalition Against COVID-19. Uh, the last time I checked, at least with the last statement that I have, over 21 billion has been donated uh, to fight COVID-19 in the area of, uh, um, you know, increasing supply for text kits and all of that. Are you saying that perhaps now, like you said, that the upper millions of the people should take care of the bottom 80 million Nigerians that are poor, that those donations could be redirected to the most no. vulnerable at this time? Please, let's be very careful. I cannot go into micromanagement. That coalition is important. All funds raised are important. All we did was say, hey, whatever funds you raise, please do not waste them. There are seven urgent needs that Nigeria has. But please, funding doesn't come from only one source. Some of the same businessmen who gave money to that coalition are also going out to get contractors to feed the poor. You, you cannot just in an emergency say, I've done one thing, I gave one billion, so I've finished. There's no such thing. If you know that your entire community is starving of hunger, make plans to go and feed them privately. I, I keep on coming back to Leo Stan Eke, who is the member of our think bank, who is feeding 7,000 people. Even if you gave a donation of one billion to, to the coalition to use for one of those seven needs, how does that stop him from feeding 7,000 7, poor people? I'm saying let others who are rich do the same. And I said already, if the 80 wealthiest Nigerians give only one extra mouth alone, it becomes 80 richer Nigerians feeding the 80 million poorest Nigerians. I repeat, the, the 80 million wealthiest Nigerians, if they feed one extra mouth outside their families, that will feed the 80 million poorest Nigerians. 80 plus 80 is 160. The balance of 20 million are in the middle. I assume that they can only feed themselves. Mm. So it's not fair to ask them to feed somebody else when they can barely they just manage to feed themselves. They are not poor, but they can only, only feed themselves. My appeal is to the 80 million wealthiest Nigerians, please focus on looking after the 80 million poorest. Mm. Feed at least one extra amount. If you all do so, guess what? We won't even need that government to help us with the poor. Okay. Um, still sticking with your press release as at yesterday, one other thing that interested me that is, uh, uh, let me take it, one, two, three, four, five, six, the sixth paragraph, where you said, furthermore, while isolated in communities, people can be put to productive work. Uh, uh, that is distributing health and safety information, sewing masks, gown, ETC, and supporting farming and the transportation and distribution of food and other essential needs. Uh, why is this necessary at this uh, point? And quite interesting too. Okay, please, this is very different from the requirement for people to come and take trillions of money. Some people already have garment factories. Mm. I know a lady who has um, a garment factory. She's not producing garments now, but guess what? The same machinery can produce masks. What was her problem? Lagos State Government would allow her uh, employees on the road to go to the factory that I do to produce masks. So I put her in touch with somebody who will help us solve that problem. She's all she has to do. Look, a sewing machine is a sewing machine. It can sew your beautiful red jacket that you're wearing now, or it can sew a mask. So my point is that there are some industries that we already have the machine before. We're directing them to now produce what we need for an emergency. The same press release advocated that as we are releasing Nigerians in Lagos and elsewhere to come out, ideally we should give them at least two masks each that are washable so that when they go out, they tie this mask around them so even if they sneeze by mistake or they cough, they don't infect everybody around them. So that's the whole industry. Also, distribution of those masks. Can you imagine what it takes to give two masks to every Nigerian? Even feeding the poor, we gave the example, event managers, if there are no more big weddings. Hey, the last time I saw one of the big weddings, the event manager also gave food to the drivers, which means that they already have the skill set to provide food in bags for 500 drivers. Let the rich people now say, you know what, the same event manager, last year you helped me feed 500 drivers of, of big men who came, who came for a wedding. This time I give you money for 2,000 food bags to feed to the poorest of the poor. Mm -hmm. 
point I'm making is that that then gives the event managers and the caterers plenty of work to do. It's about relevant work at this time. It's a national emergency. And that's why I get very upset when people come up with things that distract those who should be focusing on the immediate needs. We came up with a list of seven urgent immediate needs. I keep on saying there's no eight, there's no nine. People keep on creating an eight and a nine who distract attention from the, from the crying need of, of the top seven items. Mm. So, you know, um, you, I wanted to ask more questions, but I guess our 20 minutes is almost <laughs> up. Yes. And since you've told me also that we should focus on the now, we should live post-COVID, let's be alive first, a life out of this COVID, then we think of what to do. Uh, just as we end the interview, what other things do you have to say, perhaps to policymakers, to the, to the government, fiscal policy, monetary policy, and also the big men, and other people that can assist at this time? You said we shouldn't be distracted. Okay, I will say a few things that I've never said on TV yet that we must do, over and above the ones I've said today. One, for the poorer people, please, 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 let's learn the lesson from Italy. Where you can try and separate children and young people from the grandparents. Even if you have only one room and your neighbor has only one room, you are both safer if you rearrange things so that the elderly share one room, the younger ones share the other. Because by the time we release this lockdown and the younger ones go out, they are going to come back as carriers and infect the elderly people. So it's important that each family tries their best to separate the elderly people. I know it's easier if you're in a big house with many rooms and a lot more difficult if, if, if you have only one room. But there are ways you can arrange things with your neighbors. The other thing I've never said before, which is a major threat to, it, to us, we are a cash economy. To pay for an item that costs $1,000, you have to count almost 40 different notes. Each of those notes you touch with your fingers potentially will give you, give you, you know, COVID-19. It is very important, therefore, that Central Bank thinks about quickly bringing out larger denomination notes so that the number of notes we need to count reduces. We want to move away from those. Those notes are, are the number one source of infecting people, or they will become very soon when we unlock or, or bring people out. Because the money is dangerous itself. And, that, and the bills are too tiny. The next thing I will make is that part of the reason why it's so difficult to communicate is that in Nigeria, we stopped history in schools. So many other people have no sense of history. The, all they can understand is the Ebola. Ebola was a small fight. If those of us who read history know that the comparable battle, the Spanish flu, Spanish flu was in 1918 and it killed over 400,000 Nigerians, North and South. So it's difficult to get people to take something seriously when they've never heard that it happened before. Because if they understood history, they would know it had happened before, more than once in history. So this is not the first pandemic. Mm. The word pandemic exists already in the dictionary because it happened before, and may happen again, but not for the 100 years time or something like this. Then my final, word is that, you know, when I've been speaking of recent, I've said this economy, Nigeria's economy, is, has been rigged against the poor for a long, against the youth for a long time. Guess what? COVID-19 is rigged in favor of the youth and rigged against, against the elderly. So all these elderly rich people, if you think that I'm wasting my time trying to get you to take notice and, and do what you can for the poor, I have bad news for you. The poor young one will probably have, have lived this crisis, who will live through this crisis if they can. The people who are most vulnerable are the elderly people, those above 65, or indeed those above 60, my age group and onwards. So this is your whole fight. You stop all this endless distraction and focus on doing what you can. The young may survive this, you won't. But get serious. Mm. Okay, just, just before I let you go, there are a lot of comments, questions coming in on social media. People are watching and commenting. So let, let me take a few just before uh, you go. Uh, Abdul uh, Ganiu Ajilaye on Twitter says, Nancy, thanks to High Chief Peter Side for the sincere contributions at this time. Please do more. Um, while uh, Andrew Ilo says, ramping of testing is key. 
I totally disagree with NCDC that we lack human capacity for testing and sample collections. Let them reach out to scientific societies which have members of competence. Marty Chuzoba says, your guest proves very right. Uh, his advice to senior citizens in government to desist from lives, uh, lies and behave as elders. Uchena says, uh, please, I just... Oh, okay, this is not for us, I guess. Um, Osayeme says... Uh, Chief Peter Said is on point, enjoying his conversation regards hunger in the wake of lockdown. Uh, uh, Comrade Dara says, post-COVID-19 economy, uh, economy will impact negatively, will greatly affect national growth through increase in unemployment rate, capital projects, and many others. But one critical area the government should pay attention to now is security of lives and uh, property. There's also another tweet that just came in that is saying, uh, let me locate it quickly. Okay, this is saying, stay at home and die of hunger, Abby. <laughs> and one other said that there's, uh, I think, an unrest going on in Sapele Delta State or so. So, thank you very much, sir, for uh, being on the program with me uh, today. So many comments coming through for you <laughs> this morning. And uh, let me take this. Mr. Peter Said is focused on his contribution I am of the opinion that one of the best ways the federal government should reach an average Nigerian is to fund any BBN that has not up to 50,000 Naira in them. So thank you very much, sir, for speaking with me today. Let's do more. You've just said, let's look at it. Let's say in the next few weeks, let's come out of this, and then we can start talking about post-COVID-19 lives and post-COVID-19 economy, isn't it? Thank you very much. Um, um, unfortunately, there's no time for those questions. Yes. I even have... have another engagement but please everything has been recorded so my so they are not wasted yeah my the they are not i'm not from foundation covid 19 think, think tank welcomes all those questions and we will try and provide answers to all those very 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 you know inter, you know i mean um, insightful questions so i thank you for your attention god bless you thank you sir god bless you too all right that's the much you can take with um atado peter side who is uh, the founder of Stambik Bank PLC. He's also the chairman, uh, Anam Foundation COVID-19 think tank. He's been speaking to me at least in the last few minutes about what we need to do now. He said we should focus on the now. Let's focus on reaching the poor and vulnerable amongst us.